Well, here we go with lesson three, uh, section 6.2, trigonometric functions of angles. And uh, we here at the math department have been solving your problems since 1869, although most people would accuse us of actually creating you more problems than we solve. I you know. Oh, those are my those are my kids from a number of years ago. So we're going to be talking about the basic trigonometric functions. Uh, we'll introduce it uh, the manner that they originally historically as ratios of sides of right triangles. So given a right triangle, angle theta is one of the two acute angles. Notice the side opposite is opposite of theta. The side adjacent is adjacent to theta. The hypotenuse is across from the right angle. Uh, if we switch to the other uh, acute angle, then that would change opposite and adjacent, but it wouldn't change the hypotenuse. So there's going to be three basic functions, uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. First is sine. Sine is simply the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Notice the abbreviations we use there. Cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And again, we use those abbreviations uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. And again, sine and cosine, they're just ratios. That's all they are, no units. And the third basic function is tangent. Tangent is the ratio of opposite over adjacent. So those are the basic three, sine, cosine, and tangent. Then we have three more that are the reciprocals of these three. And that is cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. And I agree, had it been up to me, I would have made secant the reciprocal of sine and cosecant the reciprocal of cosine, but that didn't happen. So it'll be your job to memorize cosecant, secant, and cotangent as simply the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. You could also say that sine is the reciprocal or of cosecant, cosine is the reciprocal of secant, and tangent is the reciprocal of cotangent. So it goes both ways. But again, these are all ratios, and these are the, ba the six basic functions that we'll be discussing in this section and in this course. And again, opposite and adjacent is dependent upon which of the two acute angles we're looking at. Hypotenuse never changes, but there's two acute angles. They're, they're complementary angles, obviously. They have to add up to 90 degrees. But so it depends on which of the two acute angles we're talking about. Uh, that determines which side is opposite and which side is adjacent, and therefore that would change sine, cosine, and tangent, depending on which of the two acute angles we're discussing. And my last observation is because the hypotenuse is always the largest side of the triangle, sine and cosine are always less than one because it's always a leg over the hypotenuse. Cosecant and secant are always greater than one because the hypotenuse is on top now. Eh, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but I thought it was worth mentioning. So here's a common problem. Find the values of the six trigonometric functions uh, for the angle theta given this right triangle. So again, we have to tell you which acute angle we're talking about because that makes, in this case, 12 opposite and five adjacent. We need to find the hypotenuse, which we'll use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And we had uh, 144 plus 25 is 169. The square root of that is 13. So C is 13. Now that we have all three sides, we can find sine, cosine, and tangent, and the three reciprocals. So the sine of theta is opposite 12 over 13. The cosine is adjacent 5 over 13. The tangent is opposite over adjacent 12 fifths. Now if we switch to the other acute angle, that switches all these around. Now let's find the three reciprocals, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And that's just the reciprocal of sine, cosine, and tangent. So 13 twelfths, 13 fifths, and 5 twelfths. Notice your sine and cosine are both less than 1, and your cosecant and secant are both greater than 1. Tangent and cotangent, they're on their own because there's no rule that the opposite is bigger than the adjacent or, or anything like that. Oh, let's do another one. This time, A is the unknown side. In this case, that's opposite of the given theta. A is your hypotenuse. 5 is your adjacent side. Let's use Pythagorean theorem and solve for A. So 8 squared is equal to 5 squared plus A squared, and you work it all out, and A is the square root of 39, and we'll leave that square root of 39. Let's, let's not use our calculators on this, and we'll stay with square root of 39 in all of our answers. That way we get the exact answer and not an approximated one. And so our sine is opposite over hypotenuse, square root of 39 over 8. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, 5 over 8, and the tangent is opposite over adjacent, 
square root of 39 over 5. Again, these are just ratios of sides. Next, then, we need to find the reciprocal uh, functions, which is just reciprocal of sine, reciprocal of cosine, reciprocal of tangent. And we'll go ahead and leave those radicals down there. We don't need to rationalize our denominators unless it would simplify the fraction. And we're not going to do much with square root of 39. All right, moving on. So we don't have to give you a triangle. We can just give you one of the six trigonometric functions, and you can build your triangle from that and get the other five missing functions. So let's say cosine of theta is 9 41st. It's a right triangle. Let's build a triangle up and figure this out. So I draw my right triangle. I identify theta. Just pick one of the two. Now, after I identify theta, 9 has to be adjacent to it, and 41 has to be the hypotenuse. So A, the opposite side, is our missing piece. So we use Pythagorean theorem, and A comes out to be 40. So draw your own triangle, but make sure you label it properly. Well, now that we know A is 40, we can do our six trigonometric functions, which we already knew one of them there. And again, sine's opposite over hypotenuse, cosine's adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent's opposite over adjacent, and then you have your three reciprocals. Uh, this time we're telling you the cotangent is 35 twelfths. I, I'm not too good with the reciprocals. So the first thing I'm going to do is to flip this around and make it tangent is 12 35 and then I'm going to use that to build my triangle. So now the tangent is 12 35 I make that opposite over adjacent, and then I use Pythagorean theorem, and I come up with C, B, 37. And now that I have the three sides of my right triangle, I can come up with the six trigonometric functions for theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. We already knew that one, though, didn't we? And then we did the three reciprocals. Those cotangent we already knew, but you know, it's a nice check that I have them all right, and cotangent works out to be the same as the given. Well, this one says cosecant is equal to 5, and, and the first thing I would do with that is make that 5 over 1, and then the next thing I would do with that was take the reciprocal of it, the reciprocal of cosecant is sine, and I would make the sine 1 fifth, and then I would build my triangle based on the sine being 1 fifth. And when I do that, I end up with my opposite being 1, my hypotenuse being 5, and my adjacent being the unknown. We do Pythagorean theorem, and we end up with B being square root of 24, and that works out to be 2 square root of 6. You can leave that square root of 24 if you want to, or you can make it 2 square root of, square, two square root of 6 if you want to. And so I will head, go ahead and label that sign as opposite over hypotenuse. My adjacent is square root of 24, or 2 square root of 6. And I get my six trigonometric functions, sines opposite over hypotenuse, cosines adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And I'm going to leave that as 1 over 2 squared to 6, or 1 over squared to 24. And then you have your three reciprocals. Here we have the secant is 5 halves. And again, first thing I'm going to do is take the reciprocal of that and make cosine 2 fifths. I'm going to build my triangle using cosine as 2 fifths. And so my cosine is 2 fifths, a jet's adjacent over hypotenuse. I use Pythagorean theorem. My opposite side is square root of 21. Can't do much with that. So now that I know my three sides, I can get my three trigonometric functions, and then I can get the three after that. So the opposite is square root of 21. So sine is square root of 21 over 5. Its reciprocal is 5 over square root of 21. Cosine is 2 fifths, uh, which we already knew. The secant is 5 halves. We already knew that. And the tangent is square root of 21 over 2. The cotangent is 2 over square root of 21. So yeah, it's more of the same, isn't it? All right, get your calculators out. And we're going to use your calculator to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of these angles. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So when you go up to the upper corner there, it should have DEG written down. And really, all you got to do is load these up and hit the correct uh, function. So you put 134 in, hit sign, and we normally round these off to four decimal places, so 0 0.7193. And there are ways on your calculator to set the calculator to round for you if you want to. And next up, I'm going to put in negative 54. So I put in 54, I hit the negative sign at the bottom of my calculator, whatever calculator you're using there. And I hit cosine, I get 0.5878. Notice it's not negative, just because the angle's negative doesn't mean the sine, cosine, or tangent is going to be negative. Let's load up 121 and hit tangent see what you get. So you put 121 in your calculator, hit tangent, and you get negative 1.6643. So as long as you've got the calculator in the correct mode, these aren't too tough. 
Now the reciprocals are a little different because you don't have a reciprocal key on your calculator. Well, for secant, cosecant, or cotangent, uh, what's above the sine, cosine, and tangent keys is not the reciprocals. That's the inverse. So we have to do a little bit of work on these, but not much. So you have to write secant as 1 over cosine, cosecant as 1 over sine, and cotangent as 1 over tangent. What you'll never do is take the reciprocal of an angle. Don't take the reciprocal of 94 and hit cosine. Much different than finding the cosine of 94 and then taking the reciprocal. And so we hit 94, hit cosine, and you get point, net negative point zero six nine eight. Take the um, sine of 25 degrees, you get point four two two six, and take the tangent of 330 degrees, you get negative point five seven seven four, and then find the one over x key on your calculator and hit that. And when you do that, that flips it around. So the secant of 94 degrees is negative 14.3356. The cosecant of 25 degrees is 2.3662, and the cotangent 330 is negative 1.7321, and that's how you do it. Now let's repeat those uh, previous uh, set of problems, only this time we're going to be in radian mode. No big deal, just put your calculator in radian mode. Hit the DRG key and get rad up in the upper corner there, and we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. The only difference is we're in radians. Not a big deal. So you put 5 in, hit sine, put negative 0.1234 in, uh, you hit cosine, take 6 divided by 5, hit equal, then hit tangent. And there you go. No big change here. Just be in radian mode and put the numbers in. So now for the reciprocals, we'll do the same thing we did before. This will be 1 over cosine, 1 over sine, 1 over tangent. Never take the reciprocal of an angle. We'll take the reciprocal of the sine, cosine, or tangent of the angle. So here's the first thing you do is write 1 over cosine, 1 over sine, 1 over tangent. Now we're just going to put them in, hit cosine, hit 1 over x, put 5.6 in, hit sine, hit 1 over x, put negative 9 in, hit tangent, hit 1 over x. And so the cosine of 9.42 happens to be negative 1, so the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. Uh, the sine of 5.6 is negative 0.6313. The reciprocal of that is negative 1.5841. And the tangent of negative 9 is a positive 0.4523, the reciprocal of which is 2.2108. That's it. So don't freak out by this. Just hit sine, cosine, or tangent, and then 1 over x. Now in this course, your life will be much easier if you can memorize the sine, cosine, and tangent of these three basic angles, 30, 45, and 60 degrees, or pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3 radians. Remember, pi is 180. That's why pi over 6 is 30 degrees. So I'm going to fill this in for you. Please jot this down somewhere. So let's look at sine theta first. So the sine of 30 is a half. The sine of 45 degrees is 1 over square root of 2. And the sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Now if you use your calculators, put 30 in your calculator. Hit sine. It'll say 0.5. The other ones you probably won't recognize. You won't recognize the decimals. Uh, and now let's look at cosine. And notice something that happens here. The cosine of 30 is the same as the sine of 60. And the cosine of 60 is the same as the sine of 30. And notice that sine and cosine of 45 are exactly the same. And it's not a coincidence. We'll get to that uh, in, in a later lesson. You just got to memorize these. Let's do tangent. And so the tangent of 30 degrees is 1 over square root of 3, the co tangent of 45 is 1, and the tangent of 60 degrees is square root of 3. Now for sine and cosine of 45, quite often you'll see that as square root of 2 over 2, and that 1 over square root of 3, you'll quite often see that as square root of 3 over 3. Your life will be better if you just get around to memorizing these. Now we'll use those exact values to find the exact value of x and y in this case. So we've got a 30 degree angle, we've got two sides are missing, so we can't use Pythagorean theorem to find x or y. We're going to use the sine, cosine, tangent of 30 degrees to find x and y. And you look back on your little chart there, you'll figure out how to do this. So I said the sine of 30 degrees is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, 5 over y. We did that before. Well, the sine of 30 is a half. Go to your little chart there, you'll see sine of 30 is a half. We cross multiply, y is 10. We solved for y. So now what we're going to do is use trig to find x. You could use Pythagorean theorem to find x, but I, I want to play the trig game one more time. So I set up tangent of 30 is 5 over x. Tangent 30 opposite over adjacent. Tangent of 30 is 1 over square root of 3. 
set that equal to 5 over x, cross multiply, and x is 5 squared to 3. Again, you could have found that using Pythagorean theorem, but I just wanted to play the trick game a couple times. Let's do some more. Find the exact value of x and y, and again, we're missing two uh, sides of the triangle, so we, we can't use Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to use a sine, cosine, or tangent, or a two of those three, actually, to find x and y. So the sine of 60 is y over 8. That's because it's opposite over hypotenuse. And you go to your chart, sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2. And we cross multiply, and we get 2y equals 8 square root of 3. Divide by 2, we get 4 square root of 3. So y is 4 square root of 3. Now I want to do the trig game one more time here, but you could use Pythagorean theorem if you wanted to. The cosine of 60 is x over 8, adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of 60 is a half, again from the chart. Cross multiply, 2x equals 8, so x is 4. So we have the exact values of x and y. Oh, you're going to like these. The 45 degree uh, triangles are kind of nice. Um, again, we're going to use the uh, sine cosine of tangent of 45 degrees to come up with x or y. So the tangent of 45 is x over 6, opposite over adjacent. When we go to your chart, the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. So that means x is 6. Well, that makes sense because th these are those are both 45-degree angles, so they had, the two legs had to be the same length. That's going to be true in all 45-45 right triangles. The two legs will be the same length. And then I said this cosine of 45 is adjacent over hypotenuse, 6 over y. Go to your chart. The cosine of 45 is 1 over square root of 2, cross multiply, and you get y equals 6 square root of 2. Those are the exact values of x and why. Let's do some uh, story problems to wrap this up. A building is known to be 500 feet tall. If the angle from where you are standing to the top of the building is 30 degrees, how far away from the base of the building are you standing? Well, that's that's interesting. We assume this angle is between the ground and the uh, line of sight to the top of the building. We, we don't overcomplicate these. Draw a triangle. So it's 30 degrees up to the top of the building. You want to know how far you are from the base of the building, so that's x. So you get your basic drawing uh, drawn, and then we can set up a trick function to solve for x. So the tangent of 30 is 500 over x, opposite over adjacent. Tangent of 30 is 1 over square root of 3, and we set that equal to 500 over x, cross multiply. You could also just use your calculator on this one, because we're going to end up with about 800 and 66 feet. We'll never ask for exact answers on these. I just threw that in to show off, I guess. We seem to forever be worried about flagpoles in this class. Uh, the angle to the top of a tower of a flagpole is 41 degrees. If you're standing 100 feet from the base of the flagpole, how tall is the flagpole? So again, let's draw up a basic right triangle to represent this problem. So you're 100 feet from the base. It's 41 degrees from the uh, from the ground to the top of the flagpole. Let's just do that. And we want to find the height of the flagpole. So there's your basic drawing. And again, we're going to end up using the tangent function. So the tangent of 41 is the flagpole over the 100 feet. That's, again, opposite over adjacent. I'm going to multiply both sides by 100. So the flagpole is uh, 100 times the tangent of 41 degrees. Again, get your calculator out. Make sure you're in the right mode. And the flagpole is pretty much 87 feet. Just use your calculator. So the angle to the top of a cliff is 57.21 degrees. If you are standing 300 meters from a point directly below the cliff, how high is the cliff? So you pick a point directly below the cliff and you mark off 300 meters. That's what that text means. So let's draw a basic diagram and figure this out. So that's oh, it's amazing. We got this to two decimal point accuracy, isn't it? 57.21 degrees is your angle of elevation up to the top of the cliff. 300 feet from the base. Uh, we're going to use tangent again, aren't we? So the tangent is cliff over 300. Multiply both sides by 300. Find the tangent of 57.21 degrees and multiply it by 300. That's it. So the cliff is roughly, uh, what is that, 466 feet. Um, <clears throat> all these application problems work the same way. You won't always use tangent, though. Sometimes you use sine and cosine. Just in my examples today seem to all use tangent. Well, that wraps up Lesson 3. Get going on the homework.